Beginning with one employee, a mule, and a foot-powered bottling machine, Crawford Johnson Sr. purchased the exclusive franchise rights in 1902 to bottle and distribute Coca-Cola in Birmingham, Alabama. Much of Crawford Johnson's success is owed to Bird, a mule. When Charlie Fleming joined the Coca-Cola Bottling Company in Birmingham in 1919 as garage superintendent, he found that his job would be more than just taking care of a small fleet of trucks. Because stabled at one end of the garage with no gate on the stall was the company's first retired employee, a mule named Bird. Bird had been retired about four years earlier when the last of the mule wagons had been given up for trucks. He soon learned that Bird was a queen and she knew it. She had complete freedom of the coke plant slot and during the daylight hours when the street gate was open, she was permitted to roam all over Southside. The tracks of streetcars and railroads were her self-imposed boundaries. Bird was reluctant to cross any kind of tracks due to the fact she fell while pulling a loaded wagon over some icy streetcar tracks and got so tangled in her harness that she had to be cut out of it and lifted to her feet with a block and tackle. From that day forward, she never crossed any tracks of her own accord. There was a good reason for Bird being queen. In a sense, she was responsible for getting the business started. When Mr. Crawford Johnson was about to begin bottling in March 1902, he had just about run out of funds. So he went down to see Charlie Fleming at Fleming Transfer and asked Mr. Charlie if he could borrow a mule and wagon long enough to help him get started. Mr. Charlie let him pick one out and the mule he picked was Bird. It was rough going those first few months until Mr. Charlie suggested to Mr. Johnson that he put some fancy harness on the mule and a new coat of bright red paint on the wagon. The idea, said Mr. Charlie, was to drive that wagon hell-bent for election through town so people would think he was selling so much of this new drink called Coca-Cola that he just couldn't meet the demand. It worked. Folks who weren't already handling Coca-Cola began selling it. Bird and her fine new harness and that red wagon became a familiar sight on the streets of Birmingham. In nine months after he first opened, Mr. Johnson's loan of Bird ended. He bought her and the wagon. By 1922, the business activity on the back lot had picked up to such a pace that Mr. Johnson was afraid Bird would be hit by one of the trucks. He decided to pasture her at Mr. Charlie's farm in Oxmoor. Bird didn't appreciate this a bit. Every time she could find a hole in Mr. Charlie's fence, she'd pay a visit to the plant. Sadly, in the spring of 1924, Bird died, but she lives on in memory as one of the most important aspects to the Coca-Cola business in Alabama history.